In this lesson, we'll begin painting and masking the epidermal base layer of skin. All right, fantastic. So this is kind of where I've ended up. Uh, hopefully you've got sort of a similar result. Now again, it's not necessarily about the detail we're painting here. Basically just marbling these um, very similar colors together. But um, let's go ahead and create a new paint layer here. Simply drop that in above the subdermal layer. I'm just going to call this epidermal. And for this particular layer, let's go ahead and just look at the current paint target. And we can do that simply by clicking on this button here. Or if you hit the I key and bring up the channel pop-up, you can select current paint target under shaders. So um, now this is going to show us the transparency grid here, basically because there's no paint on this layer yet. So uh, let's go ahead and fix that. We'll go ahead and just simply grab a basic brush. I'll just grab maybe this hard 100, turn off the flow dynamic or the flow setting over here under pressure, and I'll turn the flow all the way up. Now, if you want to check in the project shelf we loaded earlier, I've got a, f a few various skin tones here. And um, this is something that, um, obviously, you know, we're going to pick an initial skin tone. And then we may need to change that a little bit as we kind of proceed with these skin textures. So I'm going to choose color number seven down here. And we're just going to jump over to the UV view really quickly. I'll just zoom out. And I'll simply paint that in. Just like so. That's the quickest and easiest way to paint all of those shells at once. So um, this is kind of what we've ended up with here. Now, uh, at this point, probably turning down the specular even more for the uh, shader we're working on, it's probably going to be a good idea. Um, let's go ahead and check that setting here. Actually, it's not too terrible here. I'm actually uh, pretty happy with the amount of specular. So um, what you also can do here, if you're not really happy with this particular shade uh, of uh, color to start the skin tones off with, um, then we can always come in and add, again, an adjustment stack to this layer. And maybe do a HSL for hue, saturation, lightness. Now, important thing to consider here is this character is uh, probably um, an older gentleman, um, probably in his, I would say, his um, late 40s, early 50s, and he is of Asian descent. So we need to keep that in mind when we're kind of starting his skin tones here. Um, there's going to be more yellows or more olives in that skin tone than, say, a Caucasian person of the same, uh, same age. So uh, we can always come in here and select this, and uh, in this case, I feel like it's maybe a little saturated. Just bump the saturation down just a little bit here. Again, a very small change. So um, you can see if I hit revert there, about 0.85 or 0.9 should do it, I think. Um, and we'll just come over here. And we can always come over and begin to swing the hue a little bit. If we want it to be a little more yellow, or if it's a little too yellow, we can go the opposite direction here. So um, let's go ahead and see what it looks like at a 0.1. Actually, maybe a 0.5. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that for right now. Might even take that up to a 0.9 for the saturation, just so it's not quite so desaturated. But um, again, uh, let's go ahead and attach a layer mask to this particular uh, layer. Let me go ahead and close out of the adjustment stack. And the layer mask button, again, it's right down here. So we'll simply tap on that. And you'll see a third icon appears next to that layer here. Simple dot with a square around it. That indicates your mask. And when it's highlighted, in this case in orange, that means that your mask is selected. And you're going to be painting into the mask. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with something sort of simple. We'll just come over and grab a basic brush first. Um, let's go ahead and grab maybe our super soft brush here. Come over and set the flow in the alpha. And this is going to be sort of a um, back and forth between lighting and no lighting. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure we've got everything selected the way we need to. Let me hit the D key on my keyboard. What that does is it resets my color scheme to the defaults. You can see white is my foreground color, so I will need to hit X to go ahead and swap those. So with my mask selected, I can come in here and I can begin to slowly sort of paint in some of these areas where we want to reveal that subdermal layer of tissue. So uh, the neck is an area where I might think about doing that. Let me just turn off my lighting and you can see exactly what I've done here with that soft brush. I'm going to just continue to kind of paint this in. And 
I'm just kind of working my way around. Now, when you're doing something like this, um, using this particular workflow, you need to study where the uh, blood is more visible on uh, the human anatomy in terms of the head. Um, the ears are oftentimes places where you can see a lot of that blood near the surface of the skin. So I uh, might come in here and start to kind of use this softer brush around the ears some. Again, the ears uh, have backs to them, so uh, let me just check my masking. It looks like I still have my edge masking turned on, so um, I'm going to come in here and shrink my brush down and begin to just sort of redden up the ears a bit. Sort of like that. Now, ultimately, there's hair involved here, so uh, we'll need to keep that in mind. And I'm going to go ahead and jump over here, and looks like I may have a little bit of an issue there where we may have missed some of the subdermal. Uh, let's go ahead and select the current paint target. And now the subdermal looks okay there. Mm, let's see here. Come in and select the mask. It looks like maybe the mask just uh, has some information missing there. So I'm going to hit the X key and paint in with white. And then we'll just kind of slowly paint that area back in with black. Um, and again, I use the pressure sensitivity of this brush to sort of um, soften that up some. So we'll bake that down, maybe brush some more white in right around in here. So again, looking at the current paint target and the current paint target being this mask, um, I wanted to make sure that we got any of that weird distortion in this texture ironed out. So uh, let's go ahead and jump back over here to our Beckman shader simply by hitting the I key on my keyboard. Now you can see kind of what the effect of that is. So um, I feel like I may have gone a bit heavy with the blacks in that area. So I might soften those up a little bit. I just accidentally in activated the vector inspection grid by hitting the V key on my keyboard rather than the uh, B key for bake. I find that when I get to working rather quickly that that will happen. So. All right, just kind of ironing out some of those reds there. So uh, right now I'm using kind of this single brush, just a soft, round, slow flow brush. So I can come in here and I can begin to kind of gradually bring in some of these red tones. So uh, let's go ahead and maybe take a look at another brush that we might think about using. Let me go ahead and just iron that out just a bit more. All right, so you can start to see how we're starting to bring in some of those darker reds through his nose. Other areas to keep in mind might be the lips, uh, maybe some of the areas around the eye sockets. Um, again, use photographic reference when you're starting to bring in some of these redder areas. So I'm going to come in and switch over to my project shelf. Here's another good brush. It's just kind of a freckle brush. You can see here. And I have my black color selected, so we might come in and just kind of start to gradually brush in some of this uh, texture data, or some of this area here. So, um, come in and turn on my flow control. I want that to be really, really faint. So basically, as we proceed with kind of some of these details in the face, um, there's a lot of noise in the face, uh, a lot of poor information, a lot of uh, variation in color. Um, there's a lot, basically, of noise there, just in the diffuse or the color textures. So um, I think using a different brush and maybe kind of trying to slowly bring in some of that noise, even here at the mask level, is probably going to benefit you. So uh, we'll be looking at that a little bit more as we start to add more detail here. You can see those pores are actually pretty big, those little dots that I painted in there. So I might come in here with a little smaller brush and just start to kind of add some more noise around into some of these areas. If you really wanted to, you could come in and maybe experiment a little bit with that same brush that we painted the subdermal area with. So uh, remember, we can hit the K key, and I believe it was this brush here. I would, again, using this brush, I would definitely come in and enable both flow and alpha here for your stylus. I would also drop the opacity on that guy down. That's a pretty intense brush here. So uh, if we wanted, we could come in and kind of start to paint that in as well. Let me turn the lights back on so we can see what we're doing here. We'll maybe come after his eye sockets a bit. 
just kind of slowly starting to bring in some of those reds. So you can see here, looking at this eye socket compared to this one over here, um, definitely a pretty large difference, and we're slowly kind of building that up. Now, um, again, photographic reference is your friend when you're doing this. Um, look at some of the areas where more of the blood shows through. A lot of times um, I'm seeing that the blood doesn't show in the entire nose. So uh, a lot of times it's just kind of down here in the tip of the nose. So uh, maybe come in and kind of refine that a little bit. And we'll just kind of come in and paint. So this is a step that um, really is going to be part of uh, the total amount of detail that we put into this face. So um, if you want a very, very detailed face, you're thinking your character is going to be very close to the camera and uh, um, really front and center, maybe it's a, a important character, then this is a, t uh, a step that you'll spend a lot more time on. Now this is a character that you're not going to see up close, it's just maybe a character that your your main character walks past in the street, um, then maybe you don't need to spend near as much time on this step. But um, for the most part, uh, this is kind of the masking and revealing of the subdermal area of tissue that we painted in the last lesson. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this mask in between lessons, but in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and stay focused on the epidermal layer here, and we're going to begin to add some variation to that layer with some pores and some cracks.